Hi mate, this is for you and thank you so much for sending me this awesome integral with your solution of course and I will present your solution to everybody right here. As you can see here, we have sine of ln x. Of course, this will suggest us to bring the ln x into the z. So let's do that. Right here, we will have sine of ln x and this is going to be e to the i ln x minus e to the negative i ln x all over 2 i like this and as you all know e and ln however somehow they can cancel each other out just have to do it carefully be sure you bring this to the exponent here first so that you can cancel this out legitimately and right here you do the same bring the negative i to the exponent of this x and then you can cancel things out legitimately so this is going to be e and ln will cancel but you end up with x to the i's power. And then on the other hand here, we have this minus, and then it's x to the negative i's power all over the 2i on the denominator. So all in all, this right here is pretty much our new numerator. Oh my god, this is going to get crazy, huh? So let's take a look at what exactly that we are having. This right here is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 now. And as I said, on the top, that is just the same as this. So let me just put that down. So I will write down the x to the i's power minus x to the negative i's power. And then all over, let me bring the 2i down in the denominator, of course. So let me put this down right here. And don't forget, we still have this additional ln x. So let's just put that down right here. And of course, we are still in the x world for now. So that's what we have at the moment. And once again, this is the integral from 0 to 1. OK, now, what can we do next? Hopefully, you guys have seen some like, uh, similar videos in the past, because look at this right here. We have x to some power. And in the denominator, we have that ln x. The trouble is, this ln x in the denominator that's bothering us. That's how come that I don't know how to integrate this, right? It would be much easier if we can somehow get rid of this ln x. And how can we do that though? Well, you should have watched my other videos, then in that case, you would know how to do this. And I will just do a run, uh, quick run for you guys first. Uh, I will put this down. This is my other node. I'll just put this down right here. secret is that we will be using the differentiation under the integral sign because when we have x for the base if you differentiate x to some variable with respect to that variable you can squeeze out the ln x so what I mean by that is the following let me just write this down d dt for example we know if you differentiate t to the third power this right here easy because the 3 brings to the front and the minus 1. So you have 3t squared. But if you differentiate, if the base is just a number 3 and then you raise to a t's power, then in this case, what you do is you repeat the exponential part and then you multiply by ln of this base, which is 3, like that. So if you want to squeeze out the ln x, you just have to you know, introduce a new variable and then differentiate that with respect to that variable. Then you can squeeze out the ln whatever that you want. And as you guys all know, this is pretty much the uh, Feynman's technique for integration. So here we go. I'm going to just write this down again. I will put this down right here. So this is the integral that we're looking at from 0 to 1. And we have x to some power times i like this power and then minus x to the negative i's power like this or over 2i ln x dx well if i have my variable in the exponent i can differentiate this i can produce that so i'm going to introduce the variable and traditionally if you want to follow the uh, Feynman's technique we use b but you can use whatever that you want you can use t but you know, it doesn't really matter so let me put a b right there. And we are talking about like a new function because once you have this new variable, this new kind of variable is called the parameter. 
then you can define this as a new function. I will just call this to be i of b to be this. And of course, you can plug in any b for you that you want as long as it's legitimate. So that you have to make sure this is still going to be a convergent, all right? So you do have to be careful uh, with the choice of the b value. But if you notice, this and that, the difference is just that we have the b, and this is b times i, this is just i, so we are saying b is equal to 1. In another word, this original integral is nothing but just i of 1. So hopefully we can calculate what i of 1 is. And if you would like to kind of just uh, discuss this first, it's like, does this even converge in the first place? The short answer is just that please trust me and I'll tell you guys it will converge because it converges, of course. <laughs> anyway, uh, the long answer, you can just read the comments because I'm pretty sure other people will write it anyway, so I don't need to <laughs> worry about that too much. All right, serious business. Here is my new function, i of b. Let's go ahead and differentiate this with respect to b on the left-hand side, and of course, let's do it on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, it's extremely easy because you can just put prime and can pretend that, hey, you did the derivative i prime of b. On the right-hand side, how do you differentiate an integral? Well, I said earlier, you do differentiation on the integral side. So what you do is you still write down the integral from 0 to 1, and you bring the, the differentiation inside, but inside you have two variables, so it becomes partial derivative. So I will change the notation to this partial derivative with respect to b, and then we're looking at this right here, namely x to the b i power minus x to the negative i power over 2 i ln x. And if you wonder how come I didn't put a b right here, it's okay, but I do see this a negative, so I don't like that too much. And if you wonder why don't we to why don't we put two like b here and b here. You can try that, but let me tell you, this is enough, <laughs> right? Okay, so this right here, and of course, we still have the dx all the way at the end. Technically, it's still in the x world in the, this integral, but we have to take of this differentiation first. So in that case, that's the b world. So let me just write down the integral from 0 to 1. The blue part, we're differentiating this with respect to b, namely x will be the constant. So on the bottom, we still have the constant, and you know the constant multiple will stay the same. So I will just write this down, 2i ln i, that's just a constant in the b world. And then when you differentiate x to the b i power, well, the x is the constant, it's just like this 3, so you first just repeat this part. So I will repeat just that part, which is x to the b i power, but you multiply by ln of the base, which is x. Once again, because the x is the constant, just like this situation here, all right? Lastly though, we have to do the chain rule, because b i, and we'll differentiate this with respect to b. So the chain rule says we have to differentiate this, and the derivative of bi with respect to b is just the i, and uh, you multiply by the derivative of that, which is the i right here. And then for this part, look at, this is just minus constant, 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 so the derivative of that is just zero. We just care about this part, right? And if you would like, you can split the fraction, but you don't need to do that. This is pretty much the result of this differentiation. And then you just continue to put on the dx. Well, what do we do? really nice. The ln x cancel, i are gone, and now you pretty much just look at that and then do the integration with respect to x now. So let me just write this down nicely. We have the integral from 0 to 1, and we will, let's write this down as 1 half all the way in the front. I will just put that down, like 1 half in the front. And then we have the x to the b i power uh, dx, and we are in the x world now, so to integrate this, you just add 1 to the power, and then divide it by the new power, so you divide it by bi plus 1, but let me write it as 1 plus bi. So, this right here is going to give us 
1 half times, and let me just put down 1 over 1 plus bi first, and then times x to the 1 plus bi power, like this. Well, don't forget we still have to do the 0 to 1 business, so you just go ahead, plugging x is equal to 0 up to x is equal to 1, and then just do whatever we need to do, right? So let's see if I can fit in everything right here. Let's do something in our head. When we plug in 1 into x, this is just 1, so we just have the first part. Namely, we get 1 half times 1 over 1 plus bi. And then secondly, you subtract by when you plug in 0 into the x. You know, this is so nice because I don't have to do any indeterminate form. Because this is just a 0. So it's just minus 0, so that's it. So this part, we just get this. 1 half times 1 over 1 plus bi. And if you would like, you can put a parenthesis. Up to you. So that's pretty much it, but that's the, the answer, of course. So what we have here is just that, let me just put this down. We know, uh, let me just do like a little separation. I prime of b, this is equal to that. But I don't really want to know what I prime of b is. I want to know I of b because I want to figure out I of 1. This is the derivative. How can we get back to the original? Easy. You told me, yes, we can just integrate it. And when you integrate this time, we are, we are integrating with respect to b because we differentiated it with b earlier. So you're undoing that. So let me just put down db here and also db here. On the left-hand side, it's also just as easy. You just get the original i of b back. On the right-hand side, this is the constant multiple, so let's put that down. And remember, b is the variable now because we're in the b world. Everything else is the constant. So this is just like the usual 1 over 1 plus x to the first power, whatever. It's linear. So you get ln. So let me just put down uh, ln of the inside, which is 1 plus bi. And notice I'm using a parenthesis because seriously, you have complex number already. If you have the complex number, you don't need to worry about the absolute value whatsoever. Uh, and we don't really worry about negative numbers. Just, just, just saying. But, um, What's the derivative of this? The derivative of 1 plus bi with respect to b is i. When you're doing integration, don't forget to divide it by that derivative. So we put down 1 over i. So this is pretty much it. But don't forget to add the plus c for some unknown constant at the moment. Well, what is that constant? This right here, by the original definition of i of b, is that. So let's put that down. Hmm. I want to plug in some value for b so that I can hopefully set up an equation to solve for c. What can I use though? I want to use i of 1. That's the things that I don't know. If I plug in 0 for b, what will happen? If I plug in 0 for b, then I don't know how to calculate this integral, fortunately. Earlier I said there are some conditions on b maybe. But I do notice if b is negative 1, then look at this is the same as x to the negative i, and then minus the same thing. So the integral will be just 0, so that it's going to be really happy. Because integral from 0 to 1 of the 0 function, we get 0. So let's go ahead and plug in b is equal to negative 1. I want b is equal to negative 1. And then this will be 0. All right. So you write down ln and then this is 1 and b is negative 1 so you have minus 1i and then plus c and then this now is equal to integral from 0 to 1 and b is negative 1 so you have x to the negative 1i minus x to the negative i or over 2i ln x dx and the cool thing is that this integral is a solid 0 so you're just integrating the 0 function and of course, this will converge. So in another word, you have the left-hand side equals to this right here. It's going to be 0. So it's equal to 0. So what's C? Of course, this right here is kind of troublesome. You can just bring this to the other side. So I will just write this down for the moment. C is equal to negative 1 over 2i ln of 1 minus i like this. That's the C value. 
and then you can refer back to this. So this right here is i of b, which is this, and you attach a c value to this now. So finally, I will just perhaps write this down. Okay, so in the end, I just have to plug in b is equal to 1, so we can get things done. So I want b is equal to 1 to get the original integral, so you get the integral from 0 to 1, x to the i's power minus x to the negative i's power all over 2i ln x dx. This is 1 over 2i ln of 1 plus 1i and then minus 1 over 2i ln of 1 minus i. So this right here, it's pretty much the answer. But what the heck in the world is this? It's secretly a real number. And you can be sure this has to be real because originally this integral was in the real world, right? So you should end up with a real value. I will just do this super quickly for you guys. One half i, like this, I can bring that to the front. So we have 1 over 2i. And then you have ln minus another ln. So I can write it L as ln. Let me just write it down like this. ln of 1 plus i over 1 minus i, right? And I cannot finish this on the one board. That's an unfortunate. Uh, but this right here, what you can do is just multiply by the count. You get whatsoever. You get ln. And simplify everything on your own. You get ln i, right? And ln i, this is pi over 2 i. You just take this nice value. <laughs> So what is the final answer? Uh, let me just hopefully write this down right here. It's of course 1 over 2i times pi over 2i, and then uh, the i's cancel, and then you end up with pi over 4. That's it. Whew. So yeah, this part just multiply by the uh, conjugate, which is 1 plus i on the bottom and on the top, and you can simplify to get just l and i, and then Hopefully you have seen other video on how to do L and I, and you just take pi over 2i for the nice answer. And that will be this pi over 4 is this, of course it's that, and then we are done. So the answer is pi over 4. And that's it. Hopefully you guys all like this video. If you do, please subscribe and like you know to read your comments and you know I try to solve your questions and things like that, but uh, sometimes it takes time and then uh, effort and whatever. Anyway, yeah, that's it.